put it on the personal one. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Dr. Bada, please, can you pray for us? In the mighty name of Jesus, our Father, our God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord God, that indeed you have gathered us today. We thank you because you are the God of time, you are the God of space. Whatever time that you call our meeting, whatever time we say we will speak to you is the time that we will speak to you. Lord knows our meeting with you is on an hourly, daily, secondly, past second time. So we thank you for today. We thank you, Father, Lord, because we know that you're in charge of every single thing concerning us. Even today, Lord, despite the time, we know you will come through for us. We know that with you, Lord Almighty, nothing is impossible. We know that with you, despite obstacles, Lord Almighty, you are there. We know that with you, Lord, today you welcome us in a special way. Father, Lord, as we come to you today, come to us too in the mighty name of Jesus. As we reach out to you today, Father, Lord, touch us today in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord Almighty, Holy Spirit, fill each and every single one of us today. Fill us in a way like never before. As we come to you today, Father, Lord, we say, make it a worthwhile time with you, Lord. As we come to you today, let us say, indeed, it was a good thing that we stayed and had a good conversation with you today, Lord. Bless your holy name, holy Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayed. Amen. Lady. The psalmist says we should enter God's gates with thanksgiving. We should enter his court the praise this is a time of healing the time we set apart every month since 1998 we've been praying for Frank Tola who had surgery for a detached retina in London. I was able to speak to her. A lady phoned me after the surgery and they said it was a two hour surgery, but it was successful. She was going to take off the bandage the next day. I haven't spoken to her since then. Lady might tell us more about it later on, but I just want to thank God uh, uh, because, you know, unlike. <laughs> Or like uh, Karen, I can't put something in my eye. I can't. I can't allow somebody to put anything in my eye. So my eye is very, very delicate, and I believe that surgery on the eye must be. Uh, you have to be a specialist to be able to do something like that. So we know that it was the Lord that performed that surgery. So we want to thank Him and to bless Him for it. We were, we've also been praying for. Benzak Uzebu, who has been ravaged with uh, migraine, came here the other day, was just lying and rolling on the ground in the library, but he was, was very concerned. He rushed to my office and said, ah, we have to include him in, uh, in the prayer chain, but you know. Uh, the next time I, the next day, I saw him, the migraine was gone. But there is another man, which is a... Benjamin Arinze.
have something planned because if, if he's trying to commit suicide and and um, at the last minute they are fine. In fact, this one, the last time he drank a whole bottle of pills and they were still able to flush it out. Well, I got a text message from Emmanuel Arinze this morning before coming here. I'm going to read it to you. It says, hello, sir. I just wanted to give you an update about Benjamin. God is good and has answered our prayers. Benjamin is very much improved now and the neurological condition is in remission. Thank you so much. And please help me to thank the brethren, which is you. God bless you. And so I want us to just take one or two minutes. I mean, you know, this one of Benjamin is just this, is, and just bless the name of the Lord. And just thank God. And just thank God. And just bless God that he, he, he hears us. Jesus says that, I know you hear us. I know you hear me. Uh, but the Lord hears us. This is, this is a major testimony. This is a major testimony. Uh, we will not give up. We will not give up. We will pray and pray and continue to pray. We will pray and we will pray. We know that that is the reason why God commissioned this prayer chain. We will pray. We will pray. We will not. We will pray without season. We will pray in season and out of season. We will pray because our God, our Father, our Lord, our Savior, our King is a prayer answering God. His name is Emmanuel. He is Jehovah Rufi, the God that heals us, the God that takes diseases from us. He is the son of righteousness. He arises with healing in his wings. He's a God of covenant. He says, whoever we touch and pray for, he will heal. Yes, he has done it. He has done it again and again. He has done it with Fentola, done it with Benzak, done it with Benjamin. Lord God Almighty, we thank you. Because he will do it again and 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 again. Right from the beginning of this ministry, you raise the dead. In the middle of a fellowship, you raise the dead person back to life. Lord God Almighty, you are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You are a mighty man in battle. El Shaddai. You are a mighty man in battle. Jehovah You are the mighty man in battle. You are the mighty man in battle. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, today is our time of healing, and I want to focus on just something, you know, but uh, you will indulge me for a minute. Uh, I was telling God, I said, <laughs> I said, Father, this is a dangerous ministry that you have given me. Because God asked me to pray, to, to preach about things of which I'm guilty. And I'm wondering, I said, <laughs> let it not be that I'm being set up. Uh, so I want I want to crave your indulgence at the beginning. Uh, please, um, Ike, please just pray for me <laughs> because uh, I come and preach and preach as if I am, uh, you know, just ask God to have mercy on me. Father Lord, thank you for your presence today. Thank you for gathering us today. And thank you for giving Dr. Femi the opportunity to speak your words. Father, He's asking for your help, Father. 
because it is not by his strength, by, but by your spirit, Father. Give him your Holy Spirit without reserve, Father. Raise him up. Put your words in his mouth, Father. And let him speak clearly what you will for us to hear, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You forgot a critical element of that prayer. But after I have preached, I myself will not be a castaway. Uh, I want to talk about anger this morning. The title of my message is Controlling Anger. I want to look at a scripture to start with Mark chapter 3. I'm going to look at the first six verses. Acts, no, Mark chapter 3. Verses 1 to 6. And he entered the synagogue again. And a man was there with a withered hand. So they watched him closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silence. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And his hand was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him. How they might destroy him. I started with this scripture because this is an example of a situation where Jesus was angry. And so if Jesus is angry and God gets angry, then angry anger is acceptable in certain instances. We cannot be more righteous than God. God, as you and I know, is a very emotional person. Isaiah says, the Lord is angry with all nations. His wrath is upon all their armies. That's Isaiah 34, verse 2. 2 Samuel 24, 1 says, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel and he incited David against them saying, go and take a census of Israel and Judah. And so when we look at the author and finisher of our faith, we find that there are situations and circumstances when he was angry. And as I said, that justifies anger. Now, we get angry when we feel sorrow. Sometimes we are angry when we feel grief. Sometimes we are angry when we are frustrated. Sometimes we are angry when we see injustice being meted out upon someone. Jesus was very angry at the religious orthodoxy of his time because they did not love. He was angry at their lack of hate, their, 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 their hatred. A man who has a withered hand, why would you object to his getting healed, whether on Saturday 
on Sunday. And so we find that in scripture, sometimes the Holy Spirit himself prompts people to be angry. Now let me situate this in one scripture. I could do with more than one, but let me use just one. So that I'm not just, I'm going to, I'm going to open 21 scriptures today. So I have it in 1 Samuel 11, 6. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Saul when he had the news. This was a man that said, look, if you don't want me to attack you, you must remove your eye and send it to me. And his anger was greatly aroused. So he took a yoke of oxen and cut it in pieces and sent them throughout all the territory of Israel by the hand of messengers saying, whoever does not go out with Saul and Samuel to battle, so it shall be done to his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people. And they came out with one consent. And so here we find that it was the spirit of the Lord that provoked him to anger. And so in some instances, it is the duty of man to be angry. In fact, in some situations, it can be a sin for you not to be angry. Uh, it is not enough for the people of God to love. We must also hate. We must hate sin. We must be angry at sin. A man who is incapable of being angry at sin cannot love righteousness. So expect to be angry in certain situations. And don't be surprised if you find that you are angry. Don't try to suppress your anger. Where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. So the scriptures tell us as a commandment, some translation says, Go ahead and be angry. We're going to show it to you so that we lay that foundation before we go on. That's in Psalm, Psalm 4, verse 4. It says, be angry and do not sin. Some translation says, go ahead and be angry, but don't sin. So in those situations where anger is justified or anger is required, we are required to be angry only within certain limits. So anger is natural. Sometimes it's an immediate reaction to an injury. Sometimes it is because somebody did something bad to you and you're angry. Somebody jipped you, somebody cheated you, somebody abused you. Sometimes the anger is a self-defense mechanism that you have as to some kind of assault. And it prompts you to protect yourself. But we must not allow the anger to go beyond a certain extent. And that is really what we are going to be talking about this morning. And we are going to believe God to give us the enablement to operate within the boundaries that he has said, because when we are angry, there's a danger that we may not be able to control ourselves. There is a danger that we may be beside ourselves. There's a danger that we might not be able to respond sensitively to others. Our anger might 
make us lose a necessary ability to be compassionate in some situations. It may cause us to become estranged from our loved ones. It may create strife and enmity in our relationships. It might prevent us from being generous. If we are not careful with our anger, we might discover that we are holding people to a higher standard than the one that we ourselves are attaining. Anger might cause us to become judgmental, which should not be the case. So, certain limit that we want to establish immediately, never take an action in anger. Don't act in anger. Don't even beat a child in anger. You might enjoy the child. Huh? Because things that are done in anger are often regretted. You can build a relationship for 10 years and you can destroy it with just a few angry words. That's the end of the relationship. And words are eggs. Once you drop them, they break. They cannot come back whole again. Huh? And so anger, when it is without bounds, is a cause of so many regrets. So the scripture says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Hmm? Let's look at the scripture. That means don't let the anger linger because if the anger lingers, if you retain the anger, you are going to build it up. You are going to embellish it. You are going to develop it. Ephesians 4.26, don't let the sun go down with you still angry. Get over it quickly. But when you are angry, you give a mighty foothold to the devil. Another scripture says, anger rests in the bosom of fools. Don't allow the anger to remain in you. Don't let it remain. Ephesians 4.31 says, let all bitterness, and these are all, it, it lists the family of the cousins, the nephews, the nieces of anger. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another. tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. The devil will use every opportunity to sustain you in the anger. He will try to embellish it. He will tell you things about that person that isn't related to the particular incident itself. Huh? Be careful. A man doesn't sin by restraining his anger. He sins by allowing his anger to grow. So Peter says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. So let us be wise. Because when we are angry, we are easily manipulated. I remember a particular incident. I don't know, you know, you, many, some of us might not be watchers of football. This was the final of the World Cup 
And what in the other country, they had decided they had they had did done a study and had discovered that Zidane has a bad temper. He was the best player on the French side. So the Italian team, yes, it was Italy, was Italy against France in the final of the World Cup. The Italian team sent a man who just keep abusing him throughout the match. He was just following him and abusing him. Was abusing his sister. I don't even know where he knows his sister. Was abusing his mother. And at a certain point, Zidane could not take it anymore and head-butted him. And that was it. Zidane was kicked out of the game. France had to continue playing with only 10 players because they set him up and he fell into the trap. Why? Because he could not control his anger. Look at what Proverbs 25, 28 says. I've skipped through two scriptures. So uh, it says, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. In those days, when a city doesn't have walls, anybody can attack it. People can come in. Uh, to attack Jericho, you have to deal with the walls. So we must be careful. We must be careful. I want to digress for a minute. Uh, you know, I, mean, I, I had a discussion with a man, <laughs> an Oba, in, indeed. He's the only one, apart from uh, Ike, the, the Oba of, no, no, not even Ike. Ike has read another book. He's the only one, the Oba of, of Egbaland, he's the only one that has read my new book come from beginning to end. And um, so I gave him my book on pastors to read, and he was. Uh, he was then nitpicking on a scripture that I quoted, which he said is different from what is in the Bible. And I was trying to tell him that what he read in the King James is wrong. And that what was wrong in King James was corrected in New King James and has been corrected in other Bibles. I mean, this is, you know, I mean, the King James was translated from the 10th century codex of the Bible. NIV was translated from the 4th century. The earlier you go, the better it is. Now, uh, I'm telling you about this because there's a quotation of Jesus, which has been tampered with. Okay, this is, it is Matthew 5, 22. It says, but I say to you that everyone, well, let's, let's, let's read it without confusion. Matthew 5, 22. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. That's what the new King James says. Except that without a cause is not in the original. You know, sometimes, you know, I mean, uh, and, and this makes it a completely different scripture. Huh? King James says, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause, in which case he says, you can be angry with a cause. I'm going to show you some other translations. Let's look at NIV, which in many of these cases is deals more with the original than, uh, okay. It says, but I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother, there's no without a cause. Hmm? Just don't be angry with your brother. Uh, Jesus says here, let's look at it in living translation.
But I say to you, if you are angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. So there is no without a cause. I mean, you know, a lot of the time, uh, some people insert certain things into scripture to make it sound more palatable. It's the same thing that, you know, we've talked about it before of the one that says, you know, um, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And then he says, it is, it is easier for those. And then he talks about trusting in, in, in riches, whereas it, Jesus never said that. He didn't. Somebody decided to change it because maybe the person is rich, maybe the person is, you know. Huh? Jesus says it is easy, it is difficult for anybody to get into the kingdom of heaven. He wasn't, he wasn't just talking about, he wasn't just talking about the rich. Uh, was not just talking about the rich. He decided to generalize it. And so in this scripture, uh, Jesus says, be careful. If you are angry with Dotun Adeleke, you are in danger of judgment. If you are angry with Destiny Eko, be careful. Uh, because Oman Babani, <laughs> you know, if you know the if you know the father of somebody, uh, be careful. Because if they tell you that this person is the son of Bugari, and the man is in your class, you will not slap him. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Because you know, I mean, because you know that you're asking for trouble. You're asking trouble. I've said that, you know. Well, they would have slapped one girl that because he said she's a witch for Jesus. If it was Mike Tyson, he would not slap her. If he was a very, if it was a very rich man that says I'm a witch for Jesus, he would just say, okay, let's do deliverance. He would, he would not dare to slap. Uh -huh. But he felt the woman was the, the, the woman was nobody. Mm -hmm. So be very careful. Uh -huh. Be very careful now. Anger that is sustained develops into malice. Hmm? And so when it gets to malice, no matter what the person does, you are angry. Hmm? Americans have an expression, they say, excuse me for living. That means that, you know, you are just bothered because I'm alive. Huh? If he works in a particular way, you say, what, what, what does it, if he wears a shirt, you say, you know, who, what, who does he think he is? If he, you know, I mean, you are going to think all kinds of things about him because you have already decided that you don't like him. And we have examples of all these things in the scriptures. David was told to bring provision for his two brothers that were in the army. He came on their behalf. Well, his brothers hate him. Hmm? They say, you know, what are you doing here? Hey, you come to see the battle. Well, and David said, ah, ah, ah. I have two translations. They say, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? That means that, ah, you can't, you know. And after I say, what have I done now? I was only asking a question. I mean, you know, but they already hate him. And why? Because the prophet came and ignored all the brothers and anointed the youngest to be the next king. They're going to hate him. They're going to hate him. Uh, the same goes with Joseph and his brothers. Let's look at the example. Uh, because his father loves him, they're going to hate him. Uh, and we are not just talking about Joseph now. Okay? We're talking about you. Because the father loves you, you are going to be hated. Huh? The devil is going to provoke people to hate you. They will just look at you and say, look at, look at, you look at him on his head. What is wrong with your head? Huh? Genesis 37, 19. Here comes that dreamer. They said to each other when they saw Joseph. Come now, let's kill him. And throw him into one of those, one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. They will see what comes of his dreams. From the time he told them that he had a dream, 
And as his brothers were bowing down to him, they said, who is this boy? What does he think he is? Huh? They have hated him. Hmm? They've hated him and they will hate him, period. Be careful. Be careful. There was a sister that ran to me in the office after a service. I said, what is the problem? I said, something is wrong, something is wrong. What is, you know, somebody came out to give a testimony. I'm getting married. And everybody said, oh, praise the Lord, etc." And she said, she looked and she just, she said, there was just hatred that came over her for that lady. I said, who is even marrying this one? Huh? Because she wasn't married. So she hated her and thank God she knew <laughs> there is something wrong. Hmm? There is something wrong. The lady that hated somebody because they got married, she's married now, she has four children. You know, her time is coming. She, I don't know what her problem was. You understand? I don't know what her problem was. Huh? In the case of Jonah, okay, he was a pastor that wanted his congregation uh, to be destroyed. What kind of pastor is this? God has sent you to Nineveh to preach to Nineveh. Hmm? When Jonah went and preached to Nineveh, and Nineveh repented, Jonah wanted to kill himself. He said, you know, I'm, and God said, you know, I, is it right for you to be angry? We must be careful. You must be careful. Some people, Jesus gave a story of some people who he employed at eight o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning and promised them a certain amount. And then he employed some people at five o'clock in the afternoon and promised them the same amount. And the people who were employed in the morning became angry that they were paid the same amount as the people who are paid who, who started work, maybe only for one hour. I want you to look at what he said to them. In Matthew 20, 15. He said, is it lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is my eye evil? Is your eye evil because I am good? Huh? Some of these things don't only relate to Jesus. Huh? They don't only relate to Jesus. Let me give you an example that happened to me. There, there was a gentleman, a member of Killing Wings, and his, his wife's nieces were staying with him because their father traveled. And they was, they, they, the man didn't come back for a long time. So for some reason, I decided to send them some money. Please give this to your wife's nieces. He became angry. I said, what are you angry about? He said, you know, ah, why are you giving them any money? I'm the one that you're supposed to give. I didn't know the one living with me. I said, which one concerns me with you? Am I not, I can do whatever I want. With my money. Huh? Don't think this only applies to Jesus. Let me tell you something that may or may not surprise you. There are people that you help that will hate you because you help them. Mm -hmm. They will hate the fact that you have the ability to help. And they don't have. You might not notice it, oh, but it is there. They don't like it. Hmm? They don't like it. So Jonah is angry because the goodness of God reached Nineveh. But it is the goodness of God is not dispensed by Jonah. Hmm? It's not dispensed by Jonah. And then there is anger 
about something that it's simply out of kilter with the cause. What did the person do? And he moved something from here to here. And so why are you, and it, you, you have built it into a different level. Hmm? Be very careful about anger. We have an example of that again in scripture. In relation to Haman and Mordecai. Esther 3.5. When Haman saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor, he was enraged. Yet having learned that Mordecai's people, who Mordecai's people were, he scorned the idea of killing only Mordecai. Huh? Because the man will not live for you, you want to kill him. But he doesn't only really want to kill Mordecai. Instead, Haman looked for a way to destroy all Mordecai's people, the Jews, throughout the whole kingdom of Zerses, throughout the whole kingdom of Persia, because of the infraction of Mordecai, quote unquote. Because Mordecai would only kneel to God. Huh? Some people, you know, come, they will kneel to him and say, you don't want to get in trouble. I mean, get, get away from there. Who told you to kneel? He wants to kill the whole of the Jews. Hmm? Be careful. Because some people, it's one little thing and they explode. They have built up all kinds of animosity. That one thing just triggers it. And they are going to try to react in a way that by the time you hear the story, you will wonder what exactly, did you, what, what happened is no more than this, you know? And we are all offensive. Huh? We are all offensive. I can't tell people that are getting married. And one of the first questions I ask is, this person you, you want to marry, what would you like about her? <laughs> I said, you know, I'm not asking you what you what you like. What don't you like? We have to start listing them, start listing them, start listing them. I when I say two, I said, give me a third one. This one is looking at me. I told you, I, <laughs> I, I also counseled you. <laughs> this this yeah, your destiny that is sitting here. <laughs> I, then I tell them that look. The person is not going to change. Huh? So make up your mind now, if these things are deal breakers, because you can't change the person, only God can change the person. So you must make up your mind, if the things you like about the person overwhelm the things you don't like, because there are things that people don't like about you as well. See this destiny, there are things I don't like about him. And I know that if you open destiny's head, there are things he doesn't like about me. We're just managing ourselves for the love of God. <laughs> it's true now. And so, you know, I mean, you, you, you that have received forgiveness, you have to forgive. Hmm? So when anger gets to a point where you start plotting a revenge, say, I have to get him somehow. I have to reach him somehow, it becomes a problem. I got a text message yesterday from a company that, that, that lends money. Uh, and they wrote to me about one sister. They said, this sister uh, has, has human body in her, in her house that she keeps in her house. This is the worship Satan, or you know. So I wrote to the people, I said, you know, what did this sister do to you? She owes them money. You understand? And so they have harvested her phone and are writing anybody that she knows that she's a worshiper of Satan, she has human flesh in her house, etc. You know, and I said, you know, this is ridiculous. If this sister pays you, the money that she owes you, 
and she would have cleaned her this thing with you. What about the reputation that you have that you have tried to destroy? What do you know? So when I said this, Karen was shocked. I said, You are going to be blind for the season. <laughs> the man stopped writing me after that. <laughs> he became he, he became he became uh, <laughs> He became scared because he, didn't, he doesn't know who is who is talking to him. So be careful, huh? because the flesh does not try to like to be being cheated. We talked about that last week. We tell you, I don't like what happened yesterday. You have to go. You have to do something about it. Huh? One terrible example in the scriptures, and they, it always have disastrous ends. Has to do with Absalom and his brother Amnon. You know the story. Amnon had raped his sister. And Absalom did not say anything. Absalom is not angry, but furious. And Absalom is planning a revenge because. His anger is going to take him out of any covenant that he might have with God. Second Samuel 13, 28. Absalom ordered his men, listen, when Amnon is in high spirits from drinking wine, and I say to you, strike Amnon down, then kill him. Don't be afraid. Have I not given you the order? Be strong and brave. So Abraham's men did to Amnon what Absalom had ordered. Look, let me tell you something. I don't understand human beings. Because one man, because he's your guy, tells you to kill somebody, and then you go out and kill the person. I've never understood it, but, you know, uh, people, people do this. They don't have, you know, I mean, some people go to somebody, and somebody say, okay, go out now, and let us start killing people, and they go. I don't understand it. Mm. So, anger is dangerous when it is heightened by reflection, when you meditate on it, when you dwell on it, huh? and you refuse to forgive that person, you are going to get into trouble. Huh? Absalom thought he had killed his brother. He came to a bad end. They chopped off his head. Hmm? We must be very careful. Proverbs 19.11. A wise man restrains his anger. And this one is the prayer point because you can't do it with yourself. But you know, I mean, there's, there are things that by the time you pray for it persistently, as you can see, we did concerning Benjamin Arize, God answered. Uh, Jesus says, we should pray and not faint. We should pray and not give up. You understand? When you need money for your rent, you don't give up. You go to God and you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray. But we don't pray against anger. We say, Father Lord, take this anger away. Take this anger away. Take this anger away. And we say, he is the Lord, our healer. Uh, he doesn't only heal diseases because he also heals bad habits. We don't present that as much to the Lord. Uh, he also heals sin. In fact, the primary, thing is, the primary thing he heals is sin. So a wise man restrains his anger and overlooks insults to his credit. He overlooks insults to his credit. You will be insulted. If you live in Lagos, you will be insulted. If you drive a car, somebody will insult you. Huh? He will insult you until he hits you and he gets into trouble, then he will beg you. But as long as he doesn't hit you, he will insult you, even if you are in the right. He will insult you, he will say your head is not correct. Huh? And then you will look at your head in the mirror to see whether your head is still there. Huh? understand it, man, uh, you know, Lagos is a wonderful place, okay? 
It's a wonderful place. Uh, look at David. Uh, something about the scripture of David that I've been looking for. I haven't found it here, but I read it. David says somewhere that if they accuse him of, of taking something that he didn't take, he will give it back. I'm still looking for that scripture. I've read it several times. They accuse him of taking something that he didn't take. He will return it. I say, but you didn't take it. Huh? Would that not make them say, okay, in fact, you took it? All right, Psalm 38, verse 13. But I, like a deaf man, do not hear as some things that you should not even bother with. I'm like a man, I'm like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus, I am like a man who does not hear and in whose mouth is no response. For in you, O Lord, I hope you will hear, O Lord, my God. Huh? When you decide not to hear insults, One thing is sure, God has heard. Hmm? God has heard the insult. So when you abuse people because they did something, and you know, the, the human nature is very strange because the things that we hate the most about others are often the things that we are guilty of. Huh? I don't know whether you have been watching the drama in the United States. In the United States, this is a young man called Donald Trump. He ran for election in 2016 saying, lock her up, lock her up. He was telling them to lock up Hillary Clinton because of some documents. They're going to lock him up now. That's how God operates. Uh -huh. You had it for me. Donald Trump is going to jail. He's going to spend the rest of his life in jail because God has set him up. You have, you, if, you, if, you, if you have listened to his speeches, listen to, you know, there is so much hatred that is spews. He abuses people, he abuses their wives, he abuses, you know, that is the nature of Donald Trump. The worst thing that ever happened to him was he became president of the United States. He didn't know that that was God what was going to use to bring him down. They're going to sentence him to 20 years in jail. You heard it from me. Hmm? 20 years uh, for insurrection. They're going to take him down for 20 years. Mm? See, you must be careful because as I said, the things that we are guilty of, that's what we don't like in others. You understand? You know, when a man is corrupt, when you see him on television, what's he talking about? He's talking against corruption. He's saying we must deal with corruption. We must, you know, I mean, and you are looking at the man and say, look at this person. Look at the man that is, you know. Huh? So Nathan came to David and told him a story about a man that took the ewe lamb of a poor man. And David is, David is angry. And he said, what? In this kingdom, that man must die. David pronounced a death sentence on himself. Let's look at the scripture because all these things are instructive about. <laughs> uh, we have to learn from the examples of those that went after 2 Samuel 12, 5. So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die. And he shall restore fourfold for the lamb because he did this thing and because he had no pity. If it was not for the grace of God, if David was not written into the lineage of Christ, he, God should have taken him by his lips. The man who did this must surely die. David, you are a dead man. Hmm? So we must be careful. We must be careful because uh, Jesus says we should be careful that there is no log in our eyes when we are trying to remove a speck from someone's eyes. When we are angry with somebody. Mm -hmm. Forgive and forget. Joseph said to, the, to his brothers, mm -hmm. we have started, we, we've done that 
So many times in healing wings, all things are of God. God is behind it. If God did not want them to abuse you, they won't abuse you. Huh? You have a problem, take it to God. I tried this before. Huh? Ike does something against me. So I foolishly go to report him to God. You understand? Mm -hmm. In the middle of reporting him to God, the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance some things that I did to, uh, I don't know, Festus, you know? By the time I'm, you know, uh, my prayer will start to change little by little. <laughs> by the time I finish, I'm asking God to just bless him, you know, because... How can you, you know, I mean, God is, the father of E.K. is your father. And you want him to take sides with you? Come on. He knows you. He knows where you live. Huh? So it's better for you just to, <laughs> just, you know, when you say just pray for your enemies and say, Father, Lord God Almighty, just help me to forgive. Help me to forget this thing. Help me to deal with this. Huh? You know that I'm angry. Oh, uh, God will say, I know. Uh, you know that I'm angry, oh, but really. Uh, okay, because the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 17, a quick-tempered man does foolish things. Mm -hmm. yes, last week, we, we, we talked about being foolish and being foolish. There is a difference. Proverbs 19, 19 says, a hot-tempered man must pay the penalty. And if you rescue him, you will have to do it again. Because he's hot-tempered, He's going to fight somebody. Now you come and rescue him. But one day, he's going to be hot-tempered. And the person that he will be hot-tempered against will be Mike Tyson. And by the time that he, that one has finished with him, you will come to meet him in the hospital. Huh? Because God has decided that this one is hard of hearing. He needs to be taught a lesson. Mm -hmm. He needs to be taught a lesson. So the wise man of Proverbs says, it is better to be slow-tempered than famous. I think you need to see it. Okay? I like the translation. Uh, it's the Living Bible translation. It said, it's better for you to be slow-tempered than to be famous. Proverbs 16.32. It is better to be slow-tempered than famous. It is better to have self-control than to control an army. Huh? Another scripture in James 1.20 says, the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And so please, 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 let us be careful about anger. Let us tell God to help us to control any tendency that we have to be angry. Let us ask the Lord to take the spirit of anger from our heart. Let us tell the Lord to make us forgiving, to enable us to overlook the faults of others, knowing that we have a lorry load of faults ourselves. Let us take it to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord God Almighty that this is the time of healing this, Lord, is the time of healing. We want you to heal us from anger. The anger that does not produce your righteousness. The anger that leads to bitterness, that leads to malice, that leads to produces wrath. Let us ask Jehovah, say, Father, Lord, God Almighty, take it away from us. Take this anger away from us.
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Look, I was, I was sitting in my office. My office adjoins the crash downstairs. And I just heard a lady shouting. I was screaming at the top of her voice. I couldn't believe it. And so I came out and opened the door. And she saw me. But she continued screaming. She just couldn't help herself. Huh? Even though she saw me, she was continuing screaming. She was screaming at somebody. I called her. I, she's been working with me for years now. I haven't seen her like that before. I said, you, has she been like that? They've seen it two or three times. I said, what? Huh? I called her to my office. I said, the next time, where do you think you are? The next time I hear you screaming like this against somebody is the last time you will be here. Huh? We lose our jobs because of anger. We lose something that is prepared for us before. You know, sometimes your boss will provoke you. Huh? Your boss will provoke you. I had a teacher that says he wants to be given extra lessons after work. So I said, we contact parents. Then he started writing parents himself. I, I called him to my office. Like, Wait a minute. I had this discussion with you. He said, we will contact you. Not, and, he, and he started for me. I said, calm down. Calm. The man could not calm down. That was the end of his job. He said, you are firing me. I said, yes. On the spot. And because when, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when the, the, man, the man told you <laughs> because he was teaching the class. I, you know. The man, the man was, screaming, was screaming, was screaming. You know, this is serious business. huh? Anger can, can mess you up. It can destroy your marriage. It can destroy your relationships. It can destroy so many things. And when you look back, you wonder what happened to me. Go to the Lord in prayer. Please go to, go to him now. So you think, what happened to me? Why did I allow this to happen? Why did I allow this to happen? Say, Lord God Almighty, take this in a way. Take this in a way. Sometimes it comes from pride. It comes from pride. I saw, I saw one, one man that was packing, that, 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 that was, uh, that was uh, packing people in a car park. Huh? One lady was trying to park somewhere. He became angry. angry. I have two of her in my house. I have two of her. Said, what is the matter with this man? It should not be known among us. Before we know it, you have slapped somebody. Before you know it, you hit somebody. Before you know it, a man said he was a pastor of a church. He was a big pastor in London. He came to Lagos. Had an occasion with a, with a taxi. He said before he knew it, he was rolling in the gutter with the taxi driver. And he said, oh my God, I need deliverance. Huh? He said, he, a whole pastor. He had to go to before the Lord and say, Lord God Almighty, this is a salvation moment. Hmm? You need to do something. You need to do something for us, Lord. You need to do something for us, Lord God Almighty. You need to do something for us. Take every bitterness, every malice, every wrath, every, every evil speaking. Take it away from us, Lord God Almighty. You are a God of forgiveness. Your name is the God who forgives. Let us walk in your paths. Teach us, oh God, your ways. You are slow to anger. Let us be slow to anger. Let us not be like a city without walls. Make us to understand that the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking to devour us. 
if we are prone to anger, we cannot resist him. He will set us up. Lord God Almighty. Anger prevented Moses from entering the promised land. After all his, he did with you, one moment of anger. So speak to the rock, he struck the rock. And then he put himself in the position of God. Are we gonna provide water for you people? So are you the one that has been providing water for them? Lord God Almighty, help us so that we don't destroy everything that you have helped us to build in one moment of anger. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Destiny, please come and pray for us. In Jesus' name, Father, we want to say thank you again. Thank you for, for helping us. Thank you for a timing like today. Thank you for ordering our steps to come, oh God. Thank you for your mercy, for your love. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, oh God, for the privilege to listen, to hear you talk to us again, oh God. Father, this morning we stretch out our arms before you, oh God. And we admit, Jehovah Lord, that we are the we are the people with the feeble hand. We are that woman, oh God. We are the one that are lame on the feet. Lord, we are very sick, Lord Jesus. We just ask that this morning, Father, Lord, your healing mercy, Lord, will flow, God, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Take away, oh God, anger. Take away, oh God, bad temperament. Help us to be like you, Father. Just help us, Lord. This morning, we've come to repent, Lord. We say, Father, Lord, You've promised in your word that you help us to be like you. Help us to be like you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. There are people we have been praying for uh, in the past weeks. Uh, can we can we go to the Lord in prayer concerning them? Uh, we've been praying for Shim, Falasinu, against sleeplessness, against anxiety, against depression. Can you lift her up again before the Lord God Almighty? We haven't heard from her recently, but Karen did speak to her. We believe God that He's at work. And the Lord will speak and he will hear. For he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. That Lord God Almighty will speak peace to our heart of hearts. That he will take that depression away. She will be anxious about nothing. But she will trust the Lord. She will trust our God. We are also praying for Chike. Say, Lord God Almighty, remember your son in the United States. And again, Lord God Almighty, he's asking for that peace that surpasses understanding. That peace that flows like a river from the city of God. That peace that mounts guard and garrison in our heart of hearts. We ask that you supply that peace in his marriage. You give that peace to his wife. She say, he says she worries too much. She's concerned too much about too many things. Say, Lord God Almighty, 
We pray that she will trust in you with all her heart. She will not lean on her own understanding. In all her ways, she will acknowledge you. We are also praying for Rosemary Dekera, whose hernia operation, the hernia seems to have come back again. Uh, she had an operation in this last year. We are asking the Lord God Almighty, the great physician, to visit her, to perfect that healing in the name of Jesus. We will continue to pray for Feintola about her detached retina. She has to stay abroad for at least 30 days because she's not allowed to fly. Because the pressure in the plane might affect her retina. We say, Lord God Almighty, you restore to her 2020 vision. That's what we're asking. We had asked the Lord that he himself was a surgeon that performed the operation. But as he revealed to us, God is not only the doctor. He is also the nurse. And so we ask that he will nurse train to allow back to soundness of health in the name of Jesus. We've been praying for Zoe Iroha. Ask God to perfect his healing in her. Perfect healing. Perfect healing. We've been praying about the gay and uh, Deborah, uh, God will go before them. I don't know whether they're already in Kaduna or still planning. They are trying to go from Wari to Kaduna. We say the eyes of robbers, herdsmen, kidnappers will not see them. They will go in the strength of the Lord. God will assign his angels to protect them, to guide them in all their ways. We've been praying about my book, my new book. I say, the Lord God Almighty enables me to write books, but he also needs to enable me to sell books. And so, just help me lift up my books before the Lord and say, Father, Lord, God Almighty, according to your promise, bring people from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south to buy this book. You showed me one of the books in international airports. Lord God Almighty, fulfill this vision. Fulfill this vision. We pray concerning Ada Shumari, who just lost her husband. Say we should ask the Lord God Almighty, the God of all comfort, to comfort that family. Father, comfort that family. Let them know, O oh God, that you are the husband of the widow, the father of the fatherless. Be, O oh God, their provision. And we will continue to thank God for Benzak Zegu concerning his migraine. We say, Lord God Almighty, what you do, let it be permanent. In the name of Jesus, that henceforth he will not know migraine again. 
We've done it before in this ministry. There was a time when Karen was all from having migraine. But Lord God Almighty, you are glorified in her healing. Do it also for Benzak. In the name of Jesus. Finally, concerning Benga Harris, I testify that he is healed. I've seen him since then, and the Lord has done it. And so just, just bless God, just thank God. Thank God concerning Benga Harris. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Do you have a prayer request concerning healing? Let me see your hand up. In and out. Either at home or here. Any prayer request concerning healing? Yes, Festus. I just want us to pray for my mother. She's um, her both her both arms. They are not working properly. She has been complaining, complaining. I asked her to go to hospital. To okay, I asked her to go to hospital, but still, she can't be able to do anything with the two hands. Okay, let us lift her up. I'm going to include her in our, in our prayer chain, but let us lift her up now. Say, Lord God Almighty. Restore strength to both arms. The anointing that breaks the yoke, let it overshadow her in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, she will continue, she will start to use that hand now as we are praying in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we come against the spirit of stroke. We say, Father Lord God Almighty, whatever it is that is hindering her arms, you, God of knowledge, the only wise God, you, Lord God Almighty, who knows the cause, Father, you, O oh God, who knows the root of that ailment, we ask Jehovah that you stretch forth your hand now and just touch both arms. Just touch both arms. For we know, Lord God Almighty, that that woman is the issue of blood, that your touch is enough to restore strength, to restore blood flow, to restore every ability into those arms in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Benedict. Quick, 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 quick. Morning, church. I just want God to heal you because I wake up this morning. I was analyzing my my life, and I come to conclusion that um, John and I, I'm that spent the discussion I was talking about, and I just said I will come to church today and ask God for healing. I just want God to check me. Every part of my body, my what everything I need healing because I know that. Let me just see my health is in his hands. You want a, a, a physical checkup, in effect. Uh, we're all going to get it now. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, let us just stretch forth our hands to Benedict and ask the Lord to heal him. Even those people at home, just stretch forth your hands. There is no distance in the spirit. Say, Lord God Almighty, 
let your healing power flow into him from head to toe. Make him every whit whole in the name of Jesus. He did not specify exactly what the problem is. But Lord, he doesn't have to because you know precisely what is wrong. And you are the God that rights every wrong because you are merciful, because you are faithful, because you are good, because you are loving, because you are kind. And so, Father, Lord God Almighty, we want to see your kindness in the life of Benedict in the name of Jesus. Send to him from heaven your loving kindness and your truth, O oh God, that makes free in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, God Almighty, every dry bone in him, let it receive strength now in the name of Jesus. Quicken him, O oh God, by your precious Holy Spirit to the praise and glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Destiny. Praise the Lord. Please, uh, prayer point is that I want you to join me and agree that God will perfect healing for two people for me. One, my wife. The other one is uh, my mom. Since last year, my mom, she's been suffering from loss of memory. But I've been praying personally. I called someone last week and the person said, um, that's one of my sisters that, that came and took her from home to where she's staying. Said, in fact, she brought her back home. I said, what happened? He said, she's fed up, it's going worse. Um, and she, instead of her to go to her own place to farm, her own farm, she'll forget her farm and go to another person's farm. She'll come back, she'll not know the way to her, her house. She'll, we enter another person's house. Okay, but um, they said, uh, at first they said, uh, send, get doctors to get some medicines for her. But I started noticing it when she came, when Ryan was born. Uh, she was, you talk, you tell her one thing, she'll say it again, she'll start. But I think uh, I've been praying, trusting God. But I just wanted to just put her, join me in prayer that God will perfect her sanity. She, they're, they're like five sisters. She had two other sisters and two younger sisters. So she's it's as if she's very old. Our two elder sisters, they still they behave very well. They don't they not have anything like that. But her, she she's even a, like the third person from my grandma. And she had two younger sisters, but her own I don't know. I just know that I, for me I, what I was discussing with God, I told I felt that it's an attack. So I've been trying to pray, um, and leave the medication aspect of it. So just join me and pray that God will perfect. That for my wife, um, sometimes I quarrel about it, about it, it become a quarrel. I get angry because today is one pain, tomorrow is another pain. Sometimes I just feel that she's just overstressing herself up. So that whatever is the pain that is disturbing her, God would perfect it. Thank you. Well, we'll take them one by one. Um, the, the first one is well, about uh, his mother is very dangerous. Uh, it sounds like Alzheimer's and um, because she can just go away from home and she keeps walking and you, you you don't know where she is. Uh, so can we just lift her up before the Lord and say, Father, Lord, God Almighty, uh, it is for this purpose that you called us. For this purpose where the Son of God manifested to heal us of all diseases and sins. And so, Father, Lord God Almighty, we ask that you restore Mama's memory. We know there is nothing too difficult for you. You are the God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask and think. This is a very small thing for you, Lord. Father, Lord, God Almighty, 
Restore her. Restore her to normalcy. Restore her. Bring back to her remembrance all those things that she has forgotten. Father Lord God Almighty, everything that is blocking her memory, remove it in the name of Jesus. Open the floodgates again to her history, to her memory. Bring back to her remembrance all those wonderful promises you made concerning her, all those things you spoke to her, taught her. Lord God Almighty, let her not forget the identity of her loved ones. Father Lord God Almighty, the word says concerning the prodigal son, and he came at some juncture, he came to himself. Lord God Almighty, bring Mama back to herself. In the name of Jesus, let her know where she is. Let her know who she is. Let her know what she is in you. Oh Lord, our God, do this, Father Lord, for your name's sake. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's go to the people at home. Uh, the first person is Christine Ukwa. Hello. Um, good morning, church. This is Sam okay, Ukwa. Yes. Uh, I would like us to please uh, remember my brother-in-law, David Prescott who has been on a sick bed for over a year now um, from this stroke when the doc and the doctors had said some time back that he doesn't seem to be getting better. They should take off his um, oxygen uh, support and leave him to die, which none of us uh, can accept that kind of uh, um, uh, solution. So he is still there with oxygen support and the doctors have given up on him, but we know that God is the only one with the solution to his problem. So I would, I would like the church to lift up David Prescott for us and God should grant him healing. Please send his name again. I remember we, we were praying for him. Can you send his name again? Okay, to, I'll do that. To, 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 to. What's his name? Um, David, David Press code. Okay, David. All right. Can we just lift up David again before the Lord? Father Lord, we thank you that uh, we thank you, especially because the doctors have given up on him. We thank you, Lord, because you are God all by yourself and you will never, ever share your glory. And so, Lord God Almighty, that which is surely impossible to doctors is a small matter to you. And so, Father, Lord God Almighty, we ask that you revive him in the name of Jesus. Bring him back, Lord. Bring him back to his loved ones. Father, Lord, you've done it before. You will do it again. There are people that have been in a coma for three years that you have brought back and that without any loss of anything, Father, Lord, God Almighty, we ask that you do this for David Prescott in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Daniel Ekaraga. Yeah, praise the Lord. 
uh, I need um, healing concerning my temperament. Because in fact, the prayer of today, I believe was just for me. So um, I need prayers that God will heal me of um, anger, um, bad temperament. Thank you. Okay, the Holy Spirit just reminded me that I I didn't remember Ruth. So we're going to take Ruth and Daniel together concerning anger. We say, Lord God Almighty, take this anger away. Take away the spirit of anger in your people, O oh God. Replace it, Father Lord God Almighty, with your loving spirit, with your Holy Spirit. Father Lord God Almighty, we pray that henceforth they will be slow to anger, slow to speak. Lord God Almighty, we say, Father Lord God Almighty, you will ensure that they will not take offense at every little thing. We ask, Lord God Almighty, that you set a watch over their lips. We ask, Lord God Almighty, that you give them the grace so that the abundance of their heart is your word and not offenses. That Father, Lord God Almighty, henceforth they will not be easily provoked in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you pour your grace into their lips that they will speak words that edify, words that build up, that encourage, that strengthen people, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that henceforth, henceforth, Lord God Almighty, they will not speak hateful words. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Edward or Blessing Ye. Hello, good morning, church. Uh, please uh, pray for us. My, uh, my brother, his name is uh, Orungo Ye. He has stroke. Uh, and uh, my brother-in-law, Oxo, his name is Oma Isikwa. He also has stroke. And uh, my brother in the full gospel, the business methodology, my Simon on he also has stroke. And I uh, want the church to join me to pray for them, that God will hear them. And uh, I also want church to pray for my mother-in-law and my very self. We are very strong. We are not feeling too well. That God will heal us all. And uh, especially for me also, that God will also heal me for the spirit of anger. Most time I will be reacted. And that is my request, that God will heal me and heal all of us especially the ones that they are stroke, they have stroke, that God will heal them and then return their head back to normal. That is my prayer request. Can somebody come and pray for them? Can somebody come and take that prayer? But I will thank you. Daddy, we thank you. King of King, Lord of Lord, we thank you. We magnify you. 
Father, we thank you because you set up this ministry. You call it Healing Wings, Chapel of Faith. There is a reason. There is a reason. Father, I believe and I know because there's this person that we are praying for that they, that they talk about saying that he wants to commit suicide. The moment I heard that, I know and I believe there's a reason why God took that person through those processes. God does not do anything without a reason. And in all these prayer points we are putting down that has to do with healing, it is enough to glorify the Father. It is enough to give him the glory because we know and I believe God has healed each and every one. In the name of Jesus, we come against every spirit of stroke. Every spirit of stroke from now, they will cease. They will cease to exist. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You said, in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. In the name of Jesus, we come against every spirit of stroke, die. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of stroke, die. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of stroke, die. Father, Lord, we thank you once again. We thank you once again. We thank you once again because you have given us a word. You said, whoever we touch and pray for shall receive their healing. Oh, Jehovah, we stand in your words. You never speak. If you speak, your word must come to pass. He said, even, even, even if heaven and heart pass away, there's no every single word, your word must be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of stroke today, they will, they will not exist again in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, every broken hearted, Father, come and heal us. Even, even those ones that we have not heard, whoever is sick, whoever is not feeling fine, Father, today, let every single person, let them receive their healing, Father Lord. Let us have cause to glorify your holy name. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Lord, I lift up uh, Edward E. before you, Lord God Almighty. I ask, Father Lord God Almighty, that according to his petition, you take anger away from his heart. I speak the peace of God into him now in the name of Jesus. I say, Lord God Almighty, he will enter into your rest. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you have a testimony, can I see your hand up before we pray a general prayer for healing? Does anybody have a testimony they want to give? You have at home, let me see your hand up. If you have here, let me see your hand up. Any testimony? Yes. Glorious God, my beautiful King, excellent God. We bow before your throne. Glorious God, my beautiful King, excellent God, I bow before your throne. I bow before your throne. Worship at your feet. I bow before your throne. For you are a glorious God. You are excellent to behold. Any time. Father, you are beautiful in all situations, anywhere, any day, any time. You are excellent beyond description, wonderful in all situations. Father, you are excellent to behold, any time. Praise the Lord. 
I want to thank God for so much that he's done for me. Actually, yesterday, first of April was Jesam's uh, fifth birthday. As I as I've earlier testified that there are times I wake up and I'll be looking at Jesam, I'll be so afraid. I just look, I'll just stand and be watching her like this. I'll just be thinking quite a lot of things. And she's five. I honestly can tell how she, how she turned five. Okay, sometimes, you know, sometimes you look at kids and say, and you, sometimes you're like, how did I actually, how did this girl come to my life? What did I do to deserve this kind of a blessing? You get for yourself, you feel you're so undeserving, but as undeserving you are, God just, just loves you, all right? And you're just overwhelmed that you love by God and God just comes to you. And even at times where you should be sad and be very, very sad because you deserve to be very sad. God just chose to make you very happy and just surrounds you with people who's just, you know, against all situation. They just are being forced to just butt smiles in your life. You get so... And she's five, and um, I just want to thank God that um, she's five, right? I looked at Ryan, and sometimes I'm so just just I'm is a very peaceful person. I don't know if um, if that's how all girls behave, right? She's um just there. She doesn't have if she give you trouble is when she's she's ill or something. Sometimes I look at Ryan and I wonder. I'm just. God, who is this? What is happening? Who is this boy? I can't, it just, it just, it turns everything in the house upside down. You try to beg him, pet him, but Jesam is just there. If you put Jesam here, she'll be there. Um, God is just so faithful to me, all right? I'm just overwhelmed at God's mercy, God's protection, God's love, God's provision. I'm just thankful. Praise the Lord. Well, Jesam, Jesam is just a lovely human being. That's just Ryan is a Ronaldo. He is going to play for either Barcelona or Manchester City <laughs> in the fullness of times. I have two prayer requests for two people that are very dear to me. The one is uh, Stephen Ipalibolosin. Um, his laptop was stolen. And um, it's really, it's really destabilized it because there's so much, I mean, you know, I, I, I have a laptop that has 20 something years of stuff in it. And thank God, you know, I mean, uh, his story is very strange because about a month or so ago, a little girl, a seven-year-old girl, told him, this place that you are putting your laptop, will somebody steal it? Well, we must be careful to listen to some of this, you know. Um, so we are trying to analyze the CCTV to see whether it is some people that came for the Seventh-day Adventist or some people that came for the Redeemed that came to steal the laptop. But please, it has destabilized him. I spoke to him yesterday. I just abused him. That's the nature of my ministry. I abuse people. And I just told him, I snap out of it. I mean, you know, yeah, things happen. God is a Redeemer. Uh -huh. But after all that shakara, I know I, <laughs> I know that this is a difficult time for him. He's actually here today. Please, can we just can we just lift him up and just pray? Ask God to surprise him in redemption. Ask God to surprise him. God is full of surprises. The Bible says 
all things work together for good. The things that work together for good cannot be good things. They are bad things. We know that the things that the enemy means for evil, God means for good. And so we are going to believe God in one accord that is going to bring out good out of this affliction. That at the end of it, it will take Ipalibu to a higher level of faith, to a higher level of grace, to greater knowledge of God, his Savior. Thank you, Father Lord God Almighty, because to ask is to receive from you. For we are praying for Ipalibu in the name that you cannot resist even the name of your son, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The second person I want us to pray for is my niece, Kemi Siari Bissara. She's going through some transition that requires her to move house, to move stations, to move, you know, she's going through all kinds of movement. Mm -hmm. Just say, God will take her higher to that mountain that is higher than she is. That the Lord God Almighty will cause her and her three children to walk on their high places. That he will cause them not only to smile, but to laugh. that they will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He says, I will be better for you at the end than I, I was for you at the beginning, and you will know that I am the Lord. Say, Father, Lord God Almighty, we want them to know we want Azba to know. We want Amara to know. We want all her children to know that you, and you may see herself to know that you, you, you are the Lord. We want Enara to know that you, you, you are God. You are God. You are God. And so, Father Lord God Almighty, lead the captivity captive in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Those of you that are in here, I'm going to ask you to choose a prayer partner. Well, Chuchu is not here. Is Chuchu here? Okay, uh, Chuchu, we're going to so look around and choose somebody who will be your partner for this month of month of April. Those of us that are at home, I'm going to ask Chuchu to. Put you in breakout rooms. So Abigail should be linked with APA. Abigail with APA. Barnabas Bulus with Bege Yandang. Barnabas Bulus. Barnabas is here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, Bege, Yandang, and Believe. Bege and Believe. Bege and Believe. Christine Ukwa, 
and Daniel Ekaraga, Christine Ukwa and Daniel Ekaraga, Sam Ukwa. I want to link with YMC Ali Bisala, Sam Ukwa and YMC Ali Bisala. Then I'm going to link Bimi Sola Omoya with Ladi Bada. Bimi Sola Omoya with Ladi Bada. That leaves somebody with, in, with an iPhone. Is there anybody else? Okay, the person with the iPhone, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to link that person with uh, Deborah, even though I can't see her on the screen, I know she's in the background somewhere. Good afternoon, it's Godwin, sorry, it's me with the iPhone. I thought my name was there, apologies. Thank you. 
One more minute, one more minute. One more minute, one more minute. One more minute, one more minute. <clears throat> Okay, time up. Time up, time up, time up, time up, time up. Because we still have two general prayers. Twenty nine seconds. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. Okay, we're going to pray for general medical checkup. You want God to check you up, stand up. You want God to check you up, just raise up your hand at home. Just put your hand up and we are going to pray. You are the Lord that he led us. You are the Lord you sent your word 
and healed our disease. You are the Lord, a healer. You are the Lord that healeth us. You are the Lord, you are the Lord. A healer. You sent your word and healed our disease. You God, God Almighty, we are here again today. In this first Sunday in the month of April, looking unto you as always, Lord God Almighty, for a medical checkup. Father, Lord God Almighty, you are the same yesterday, today, forever. You have been doing this to us, for us, for the past 25 years. And so, Lord God Almighty, I ask that your lamp will search us from top to toe. Is there anything, Lord, that you have not planted? Let it be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our God will make a way. Where there seems to be no way, he walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for us, he will be our guide. Hold us closely to his son with love and strength for each new day. He will make our way. He will make our way. Let us pray concerning provision this month of April. Ask God to be your provider. Ask him to be your provision. Say, Lord God Almighty, let your provision be seen in my life. Let my bands be full. Food on my table, oh God. Put resources in my hands, Father Lord God Almighty. Enable me. Provide for me, good shepherd, Lord God Almighty. Enable me to do, to fulfill your good purpose in this month of April. Father Lord God Almighty. You say you will make your grace to abound toward us. Enable us to have all sufficiency in all things. Father Lord God Almighty, and to do every good work in your name. Lord God Almighty, let us not lack any good thing this month, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Can we have the choir, please? Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Papa. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. 
We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you, Baba. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Everlasting Father, thank you so much, Lord Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. Lord Jesus, eh, eh. we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Olu and me, Modupe. Olu and me, Modupe. Modupe, Modupe, Baba. Modupe, Modupe, Modupe. Modupe, Baba. Olu and me, Modupe. Eshe, Jesu, Olu and me, Modupe. Glory be to the Lord in the highest highest. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest highest. Everybody shout a little. Hallelujah. Yeah, glory be to the Lord in the highest. Alleluia. Everybody shout hallelujah. It's good. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord in the highest. Hallelujah. Praises be to the King in the highest. Hallelujah. People of God sing hallelujah. 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 Ah, hallelujah. For his mercies. Hallelujah. Ah, For his kindness. Ah, hallelujah. For protection. Ah, hallelujah. For deliverance. Ah, hallelujah. Honor be to the Lord in the house. Ah, yes. Hallelujah. All thanks be to the Lord in the highest. Hallelujah. We will love God thanks. Hallelujah. 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 We will love God sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, good Baba. Papa Mimo Palala, 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 Papa Jaya Palala, 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 
Jesus I Have a CIA. I am. 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 I my God is so good. He is so good. My God is so good. He is so excellent. Glory be to the King in the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a marvelous girl, what a marvelous girl. Stay for me, what a marvelous girl, what a marvelous girl. He said, stay for me, what a marvelous girl. What a marvelous girl. See how many of us are right to stay for me. What a marvelous girl, what a marvelous girl. He said to do marvelous things for me. Hallelujah. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous. He said to do marvelous things for me. What a glorious God. What a glorious God. See how he has done marvelous things for me. He's faithful, Jehovah. 
this I am that I am. He did it for me all again. Hallelujah. One of my bellas, God. One of my bellas, God. He has done my bellas things for me. One of my bellas, God. God in my bellows, he said to do my bellows things for me. Praise the Lord. Amen. There is, a, there, is, there is somebody here who is a student. That's by me. My name is Scholastica. Please come forward. We are going to close this prayer meeting. I always marvel at that name, Scholastica. I said, this one, your parents want you to be a bookworm. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for what you spoke to us today. And we pray that you keep dealing with anger in our lives every day so that we'll die finally to anger and keep having your peace every day of our lives and no matter how angry somebody must have made us when we remember your word we will overcome in the name of jesus ancient of days keep holding us oh god and not to get you know not to sin against you in our anger even getting angry in something that is bad but not to overreact father lord keep holding us oh god Help us never to deviate from that right way, the righteous path every day of our life. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Lord, say to the righteous, you are the apple of God's eye. In Jesus' yes, the mighty name. Of God's eye. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, God bless you all. Amen.